Survive to Thrive radio network at www.survive, the number two, thrive.net. Times are getting tough for most of us, and being prepared has never been more important. All of our hosts strive to keep you well informed so that you can achieve optimum health in all areas of your life. If you feel that the shows and website are informative, please share this information with your friends and family. If you would like to see certain topics covered, please let us know. Join us on Facebook to help spread the word. You can find the link at the bottom right of the Survive to Thrive homepage. EnterHealth Botanicals is the sole sponsor for this network, providing you not only with important information, but also with highly effective products that produce real results, such as EnterFood, coconut milk powder, liver cleanse, Coco Mojo, Silamarin, NutriCafe, and introducing the new 40 day, 40 night organic preparedness pail. A preparedness supply unlike any other on the market today. Supporting EnterHealth supports both this network and your own health. Without good health, we go nowhere. Go to survivetothrive.net and click on the EnterHealth banner on the top right for automatic discounts or call them at 866-762-9238. That's 866-762-9238. You can also go to their website at www.enerfood.com. That's E-N-E-R-F like Frank, O-O-D like dog, dot com. Enerfood.com. A big thank you to all of our listeners already taking the products that Enter Health offers. We truly appreciate it. We thank you for your support and encourage you to listen often to stay informed during these crucial times. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Hawk coming to you. It is 5-9-2013, May the 9th. And, uh, it's getting pretty wild. Now, last week I was talking to you about the possibility of something happening in uh, Cincinnati at the Flying Pig uh, Marathon, or, you know, run there, and uh, the other activities, and then also the possibility at the at the uh, Run for the Roses in uh, Kentucky. Well, thank the Lord that nothing did happen. Uh, more and more analysis that I've put together with some insight from the Lord, is that I think that we did do some very good in those two broadcasts last week. Uh, because I will tell you some dots that uh, if one speculates just a little bit, you can connect. You can see that the Joker Touch speech to the graduates at Ohio State, how it would have been time to be perfectly after the race there, you know, or in that same conjunction period to where he could have become the Savior. You see what I'm saying? Could have become the Savior. And then the fact is that he's trumpeting, don't listen to those voices talking about tyranny of government. Well, I'm sure he's getting reports, at least for nobody else from uh, Sheriff Little Dicky Jones in Butler County, Ohio, about how people are on to the tyranny there. And the fact that the Muscatatuck, uh, Atterbury training facilities in Indiana last fall, how they did military drills, drilling a nuclear device exploding in the Cincinnati metropolitan area, and how they had set up for that and did all kind of checkpoints on those bridges from Indiana to Ohio and did all sorts of things last fall, which we did report to you. That aspect right there is quite interesting. The second thing is, is that he would have been in a position to become the savior, so to speak. And you also have a scenario that a lot of people don't know about is that apparently, apparently the uh, person taking over as the head FBI guy in the Cincinnati office, which is happening now apparently or getting ready to happen, He's supposedly a uh, pretty uh, junkyard dog, hot dog, uh, hostage rescue team, hard charging, uh, kill them all, let God sort it out kind of an FBI guy. A whole hard man, a man of hard rule and hard as iron rule, and rule by the gun. 
So he would have been the perfect setup to become the new hard charger to go after all of the quote-unquote domestic terrorists in the Cincinnati area or the Ohio area or Indiana, you know, that whole area there, the metro. Because, you see, they could have uh, easily gotten, a, you know, a one of them old Buckeye hillbillies, you know, kind of guys, you know, or somebody from Kane Tuck who came up or somebody from Indiana who came up who was probably a white supremacist anyway and a, probably a disabled American veteran, the worst terrorist of all, according to the government. So, you see, it was kind of set in a neat a little kind of a way. And then it just so happens that the... Uh, OHP, the Ohio Highway Patrol, had a uh, an extremely serious, a day or two ago, extremely serious alert for a truck and trailer all throughout Ohio, and it was a hot alert. It was kind of a hot little deal from what we understand. And I suggest to you that it's possible, just speculating here, but it's possible that is the errant or missing bucket of sun or two getting out of that area after they stood down the false flag. So you can take that to the Lord in prayer, which I have already done for him as far as my sub goes. And the Lord shows me that, that we probably did some very well, did some good. I also know that since then that, uh, I mean, if you ever want to feel the... <laughs> The heavy hand uh, electronically of surveillance, you can feel it. When you answer an email that somebody has sent you, emails, you know, and you answer and give some information to them, and uh, they end up receiving on one day an answer to your email, they receive it three times, but at three separate times of day. You know, like once maybe a half an hour to an hour after the email is sent, not within a couple minutes like normal which points to the fact that somebody else is reading it. And then another one shows up two, three hours later, and then another one five, six, seven hours later in the evening. All the same email messages that I sent, that means that it's basically going through three separate different groups individually, apart maybe even unknown to the others, are uh, surveilling the deal, and then they've got a, a pass-through on everything on my route, and uh, this other guy's route, let's say, on our computers. And then the very next day, it ends up that after we discuss that a little bit, it ends up now there's four times. So I really want to compliment the NSA, the ham-handed FBI, uh, the EIEIOs, or whoever it is, all of the four different people, who are telltaling the fact that, uh, you know, my electronic mail is under surveillance. Well, now, here's the thing. Everybody's is, just as we've told you, and now they've come out with it. And basically, the FBI is saying, FBI, I thought you boys were geniuses, MBAs, lawyers, etc. Oh, and you don't need no stinking warrant. You don't need no stinking warrant to surveil all electronic mail. All electronic phone calls, which basically means everything, because landlines just ain't done by the old flips for toggle switches and operator number six at the old uh, Bell Telephone Company anymore. They're all done with electronic switching. So we've known this for a long time. Now they basically are admitting it, and Obama's going along with it the whole bit. So they are receiving and intercepting every single email, every single cell phone call, every landline call, every Skype, every search on your computer, every time you went to this website, that website, the other website, all of your purchases. And not only that, they've got now all of your medical records, all of your school records, Okay, your any kind of uh, uh, court records, all of that is all put together, and then they've got only that with the license plate readers. It even goes down to the local police department level, 
to where they can punch you up if they got the right idea. They can tell you how many people in the family, how many times you've been arrested, where you went to school, what kind of car you have, what kind of involvement the car has been, whether or not you got a concealed carry permit or you bought guns. They may even have more data about you if they kick into it. They got the right clearance. They can get your entire financial history. They can get your entire medical history and your entire school history. All of that's available at the touch of a switch. It is all said, in, and, and done. So now we have you cops, you FBI, you scumbag, the NSA. Now you have exactly what Hitler's Gestapo wish they'd had and what um, Anton Beria's Cheka and NKVD, what Stalin wished he'd had, okay? And the answer to you, you tyrannical surveilling scum, the answer to you is, is exactly what old Solzhenitsyn said. Alexander I. Solzhenitsyn and how he burned in the camps later thinking, what would things have been like if every security operative, when he went out at night to make an arrest, had been uncertain whether he would return alive and had to say goodbye to his family? Or if during periods of mass arrest, and oh, they're coming, and you guys are just really getting the tingle up your old leg. Oh, Chris Matthews will be just right with you, getting a tingle when Obama gives the order to go full-blown martial law, which hopefully we stopped in the Cincinnati metro area last week with the flying pig marathon. Hopefully we stopped that by warning that it was a possibility. And we also heard, by the way, and let me finish this sentence here, if during mass arrests, for example, in Leningrad, when they arrested a quarter of the entire city, can you imagine what they could do now with helicopter gunships, with drones, with all of the mercenaries, the Russian troops that are in Ohio, the Russian troops in Colorado, the Russian troops that are in Texas, the Russian troops that are in North Carolina, the Russian troops that are in Montana, the Russian troops that are all over this country, along with all the Blackwater Zs and heebie SYZ and the craft and all these mercenary units who will just do it for pay. They'll kill all the Christians. Or whoever it is, they're told to go kill because it pays pretty doggone good. When you can go into the Walmart there and, uh, you know, in uh, Loveland, Colorado or somewhere, Greeley or somewhere, and you go to the Walmart there and, uh, by golly, you just walk right on in and uh, you're the Ruski and you got a whole five, six thousand dollar watt of hundreds brand new Crispins in your old, uh, brand new jeans pocket where you bought the jeans there you got your Levi's your Wranglers or something on and it's just real good to drive around hut 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 in tinted window black suburbans so anyway this is for you boys what things would have been like a very security operative when he went out at night to make an arrest had been uncertain whether he would return alive and had to say goodbye to his family or if during periods of mass arrest for example Lenin Grant when they arrest a quarter of the entire city people had not simply sat there in their lairs paling with terror at every bang of the downstairs door and every step on the staircase but had understood they had nothing left to lose and had boldly set up in the downstairs hall an ambush of a half a dozen people with axes, hammers, pokers, or whatever else was at hand. The organs would very quickly have suffered a shortage of officers and transport, and notwithstanding all of Stalin's thirst, the cursed machine would have ground to a halt. If, if we didn't love freedom enough, and even more, we had no awareness of the real situation. We purely and simply deserved everything that happened afterward. Alexander I. Solzhenitsyn. Now, that's what Solzhenitsyn had to say to you. FBI and EIEIO and all the different uh, uh, alphabet soups. And anybody in this United States government or the local police department or the sheriff, whoever, who's going along with them and taking the federal scum money. 
and who's getting ready to go along with them in a martial law scenario. Jesse Ventura also said to you, and I know I've read these to you before, but they're real doggone good. You control our world. You poison the air we breathe, contaminated the water we drink, and copyrighted the food we eat, and we fight in your wars, die for your causes, and sacrifice our freedoms to protect you. You've liquidated our savings, destroyed our middle class, and used our tax dollars to bail out your unending greed. We are slaves to your corporations, zombies to your airwaves, and servants to your decadence. You've stolen our elections, assassinated our leaders, and abolished our basic rights as human beings. You own our property, shipped away our jobs, and shredded our unions. You profited up a disaster, destabilized our currencies, and raised our cost of living. You monopolized our freedom, stripped away our education, and have almost extinguished our flame. We are hit, and we are bleeding. But we ain't got time to bleed. We will bring the giants to their knees, and you will witness our revolution. And Jesse Ventura signed that sincerely, the serfs, letter to the ruling class. So, boys, you better understand. You think you're on the winning side. You're now going to surveil everybody. And you think you're on the winning side. And then, as a matter of fact, uh, the uh, military command unit, that went up with all with tones and all the bells and whistles. That was uh, today or yesterday, uh, e uh, early in the uh, late at night or early in the a.m. this morning. The command unit that went up with tones over all the uh, U.S. military in the United States was codenamed Antichrist. I kid you not. The code name, ladies and gentlemen, was Antichrist. So whoever is going by that code name. And whoever thinks they're in charge of the whole thing. Well, just listen to what old Jesse Ventura had to say. And you can listen right here to what they said in the Declaration of Independence. Because this applies to you, it applies to the police, the sheriffs, anybody who is in violation of the laws of the Lord, the Constitution, and the Bill of Rights. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object, evinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism. It is their right, it is their duty, to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. And then if you don't believe that, then you can go right to the words of our Lord Jesus in Matthew 13. He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. And the enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. And the reapers are the angels. And as therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity. That means you out there in the EIEIOs, in the intelligence community, in the executive branch, in Congress, in the courts, in the police departments, the FBI's, the NSA's, the CIA's, the DIA's, the EIEIOs. All the ones that you don't know about that are out there anyway. The individuals who gave the stand down order, whoever that was, on Benghazi and allowed your ambassador to be sodomized and then strangled to death probably while being sodomized and killed and the others killed and now you're going to cover it up but on the very same day on the very same day that you covered up to the people who are involved in the scenario, the witch Hillary and the other witch who went on the TV shows 
And they're lower level players, but they're involved. Susan Rice, the two witches. But the upper end of this thing is Chairman Joint Chiefs, Leon Panetta, who was then Secretary Depp, and the Joker Tut himself. The old Joker Tut lizard, the bucking for the AC himself, who just thinks he's going to be the cat's meow. And he's going down there, he's down there in Texas with a black hat on, you betcha. Going down there, he's going to tell them Texas a thing or two. Well, Texas, you better just do a, you know, a little yee-haw, and you better tell him and remind him about your own state constitution and how you can, anytime you want, you can break off from the U.S. Anytime you want, become your own Texas Republic again. And it seems as though you're doing just fine. You got a budget surplus of eight billion dollar surplus, and you created more jobs than probably the whole rest of the nation combined in the last six months. And he's going to lecture you on how to create jobs down there. Don't you know you're supposed to just lay off and lay over for the uh, all the illegals and uh, you know all of that? Don't you understand that? And then put them all on welfare. And nobody's supposed to work because you want everybody under your thumb. So here you go. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them to do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire, and there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth, and then shall the righteous shine forth as the Son in the kingdom of their Father, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. So you see, you tares, you workers of iniquity, those of you who supposedly have the public trust, and you use that as a flush it down the toilet kind of a system to destroy the beauty of this country that was founded upon the principles of God and then enumerated the freedoms and everything that our Lord has given us and enumerated them in the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the most wonderful experiment ever, the most greatest leap in terms of freedom of any government that's ever been, that became the biggest powerhouse on this planet, and now you're going to destroy it, and you're in the process of destroying it, and it's almost gone. It's almost gone. And the only way it's going to come back is when the Lord Jesus comes. That's it. And I'm telling you, that's it. Now, I'll tell you some other things here that's quite interesting. And I'm going to get to Benghazi here in a minute. But you see, that's the investigating what they did the last time. So I'm telling you that what they're getting ready to do again is they got to go to war in Syria. They got to go to war in Syria. It's biblically to be fulfilled. And then Israel has to attack again. And that has to be the hook of the jaw of Gog Magog. So now you got the Russians going to sell, they say, the S-300 system to the Syrians. They talked about this a while ago. I submit to you and to all you boys at the EIEIO, the S-300 system is already in place, and they're working on it probably right now, already in place. That doesn't mean that they would not allow... Israel to come and do a hit, you see. But now that it's there, they've got it in place, it'll be a matter of the Russians turning it on. And you know they rushed a lot of vessels and ships to the Syrian port of Tartus and Latakia, where the Russians have a permanent base, a naval base there. So you see... That all came, and it's there already, and it's being set up probably now if it's not already been done. But that's ready and waiting for the next go-around, when the eagle might get involved, you see, and the Western nations get involved. And then you got Isaiah 17, which I've read to you many times, where it talks about, Isaiah 17, and we got uh, verse 
Verse 12, Woe to the multitude of many people, which make a noise like the noise of the seas, and to the rushing, the rushing of nations that make a rushing like the rushing of mighty waters. The nations shall rush like the rushing of many waters, but God shall rebuke them, and they shall flee far off, and shall be chased as the chaff of the mountains before the wind, and like a rolling thing before the whirlwind. And behold, at evening tide, trouble, and before the morning he is not. This is the portion of them that spoil us, and the lot of them that rob us. So, you see, it's the lot of those persons that spoil us, and then a lot of them that rob us. So, you see, this is the lot. And then people say, well, why would, why would God rebuke the United States? Well, because, you see, we're no longer the little you, big S, of all the sovereign states that united, where you had total basic freedoms in this country for the first time on this planet. And when you owned your property, your property was your castle. It was your kingdom. It was yours. You were a sovereign individual. And you had your property and you could hold it in a lawyer, meaning nobody could ever take it away. And then they got rid of that. And then they, they did all kind of things then to tax you, initially to consolidate the schools or this one or that one or the other one or to put a tax on for conservation or some sort of thing or soil conservation or the conservation where you let the feds come in and take it all away. So they've got to do this in Syria and they're going to do this and they're going to do Iran and they've got to bring the Ezekiel 38, 39 into fulfillment and they will do it. It's already lined up to do it. You can see it. We've been talking about it a while. But you see, now you understand why certain things, why I keep hashing it out and keep going and going and going on the certain stories of certain Bible verses, because that's where we're at. That's where we were coming to. Now we're here now. So consequently, uh, there's some good stories. Um, one of them is uh, a WND, World Net Daily. Benghazi makes Watergate look like kindergarten. And uh, basically, General McInerney says it was a dereliction due to this nation as never seen before. And I'll tell you something. Another good story, uh, Dave Hodges of Common Sense, they, they came. They murdered. They covered up. And he's talking about Hillary Clinton. And he's talking about, he's talking about um, the people above in terms of the military. And he's talking about... Uh, the Joker Tut himself. Because here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen. You got apparently General Ham and Admiral Guyette. Apparently wanted to go ahead to send in people. But from what I understand, and let's uh, think in the Hodges uh, article right here today, uh, that's at. Uh, the common sense show .com. He's basically talking about, first of all, he talks about uh, General Ham and Admiral Guyette understood their oaths of office, and Ham is the head of APRICOM, and Guyette, I believe, is the, uh, the admiral that's in, in charge of the, uh, the Mediterranean. That he uh, basically, uh, let me quote this here, what the article says. General Ham and Admiral Guyette understood their oath of office when General Ham received his stand-down orders from Panetta on behalf of Obama. He de defiantly made plans. Now listen to this. He defiantly made plans to go ahead with the rescue, and then he was arrested within minutes of contravening the order by his second-in-command, General Rodriguez, out to sea, Admiral Guayette, the commander of Carrier Strike Group 3, was preparing to provide intelligence and air cover for General Ham's rescue team 
in violation of his standing orders, and he was promptly relieved of command for allegations of inappropriate leadership judgment. Both men are being held today, basically what they says here in the article, at undisclosed locations. Now you see, they could be held uh, in their own quarters or somewhere and be told to shut up under pain of death to themselves and their families. Because that's the way that game is being played. And I'll be back in a moment, ladies and gentlemen. With natural and man-made disasters and economic turmoil, if we don't get well prepared, we will most certainly regret it. Good readiness must include storage of high-quality food that will build us up rather than tear us down. Much of the storable food available is full of bad fats, salt, sugar, nutrient-poor refined foods, and even MSG. In response, Enerhealth Botanicals has created our 40-day and 40-night 100% organic preparedness pail. It's GMO-free and has a 10 to 20-year shelf life if stored at 60 degrees or less. Some of the items need cooking, some can be eaten dry, while some can be soaked and sprouted. These are selling out fast, a third the price of storable food packages. Call us at 866-762-9238. That's 866-762-9238. Or go to enerfood.com, E-N-E-R-F-O-O-D.com. 866-762-9238. Or go to E-N-E-R-F-O-O-D.com. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's the Hawk on Survive to Thrive. It is Thursday night, 5 9 2013. And I'll tell you what, if you would like to get an extra discount off of all the items at Inner Food or at Inner Health Botanicals, you just tell them that Hawk sent you, that Hawk sent you, they will give you a discount on, I think, on everything except for a Berkey light or Berkey water filter. But everything else, the herbal tinctures, the uh, Silamaran, the, the uh, inner food itself, which will extend your long-term storage food because it gives you the correct nutrition that you need by drinking a shake or two a day, which you can make with juice, water, you can make it with milk. You can do it any way you want to do it. But the fact is, it will give you what you need, and it will allow you to perhaps then skip a meal or so, although that's not the recommendation we're talking about in the field. It will keep you going until you can eat that next regular meal or get that MRE out or get your mountain house or whatever it is you've got or your long-term uh, storage food, your 40-day, 40-night pail for organic food. You'd better get all of it you can. And the radiation stuff that will help you, the bladder rack, uh, seaweed, all the different items that uh, we've talked about before, and the herbal tinctures, you're going to need it all, ladies and gentlemen. You'll get an extra discount. You tell them that Hawk sent you. Now I'm going to tell you something else, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Steve Quayle, Brother Quayle, has got a new book that's going to be coming out. It's called True Legends, Tales of Giants and the Plumed serpents tales of giants and the plume serpents it's over 400 plus pages and it's going to be a blockbuster and i'm going to tell you something the research has been done on this has been some very interesting clandestine research done with some native americans in different places across the country uh and looking into some interesting things that are ongoing not just things in the past. And it's going to be a tremendous book. You'll be taking advance orders in the very near future, probably around the 15th of the month. Probably be about 40 bucks. And uh, when you see it at stevequail.com, stevequail.com, or uh, the Genesis 6 Giants website, either one, you'll see it up there. And he'll probably uh, break it uh, out uh, the box uh, when he gets ready there and uh, has the uh, items start to get uh, coming from the printer or, you know, getting into the final print, etc. He'll take advance orders, and uh, you'll be able to order it right off, the, uh, right off the web, you know, off the websites. And then if you would like gold or silver and you like to get it right away instead of waiting like a lot of people are finding, they're having that their resources uh, don't have enough gold or don't have enough silver to sell them, 
Steve has got access to it. He can sell you gold. He can sell you silver. And he can get it to you quickly uh, after clearance of funds, uh, probably within a week, you know, in terms of uh, uh, gold or silver. He's got it. And if you call 406-586-4840, 406-586-4840, or you can email Steve, 777 at stevequail.com. Steve777 at stevequail.com. And ladies and gentlemen, you can tell Steve, hey, I want to get into, uh, I want to get into a gold or I want to get into silver or palladium, platinum, whatever it is. And, uh, go ahead and get that going right now because I'll tell you, just like Lindsey Williams said, just like V has said, just like Steve's told you for all these years, that if you don't have the physical gold and silver, you're not going to be able to do the things or to buy whatever it is you need to keep your family going. Yes, at a certain point, it all becomes about food, firearms, and all of these things. But the fact of the matter is, is that gold and silver are always going to be, until the Lord Jesus comes back, they're always going to be necessary to be able to continue to survive in this world, particularly in a beast antichrist system. And as I told you before the break there a little bit ago, the code name of the command unit of the U.S. military that was up with all the tones, bells, and whistles. And for those of you listening, you know what I'm talking about was called codename Antichrist. It's not even funny, even if it's a joke. Particularly in light of the fact that the Pentagon, the Army, and all kind of people have said that Christians are the terrorists. Christians are evil. Christians are the ones that need to be surveilled, persecuted, and killed. And the fact is, it comes down to it, like we were talking right before the uh, vent or the uh, break here, we're talking about Benghazi and apparently how Guayette and General Ham were ready to go and even were going to go ahead in spite of the fact of being ordered to stand down. And then apparently Ham's deputy basically took over at that point, according to the story, Dave Hodges' story in the Common Sense Show. Dot com. Now, I also heard Dr. Pachinik today on Alex Jones. And old Dr. Pachinik uh, has quite a lot of bit to say. He basically said that that it was Dempsey, um, Hillary Clinton, um, the Undersecretary Kennedy, um, Dempsey Chairman, Joint Chief of Staff, and he reiterated that Ham tried to go, and Goyad tried to go, and tried to rescue, and that they could have been done. General McInerney says, could have been done. McInerney said he has flown F-16s out of Aviano. They could have dropped their tanks. They'd have been there in a heartbeat and could have come to the assistance of the Libyan Benghazi annex there in the mission, the consulate, and they could have scraped or done whatever, shot missiles, rockets, you know, at the uh, uh, at the uh, people attacking the embassy. And he says they then could have uh, recovered after a little bit and gone to an island off the Italian coast, which you could go to different things there. There's all kind of stuff out there. Or you could have launched perhaps from fighter jets off the carriers, you see, and then the fact is, they also had drones. They also had a Predator drones up and around. NSA had them up in real time, and they were watching it all happen. Well, why didn't the drones, which they now say are going to be used in the United States to surveil people here and to take out people here, and now that the Senate apparently has passed a bill in the Senate that says that all of the United States is a battleground, which means the U.S. military can kill you, assassinate you, do whatever they want, lock you up because it's a battlefield. It's a war zone. It is a complete 
area where it's at war and that the rules of war apply and not the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, or anything, which they also, we've known that since the Emergency Powers Act of 1933, is really known as the Trading with the Enemy Act of 1917, which made you an enemy of the state, as amended 1933, which declared an executive branch dictatorship over this country, and the state of emergency has been continued by every president since, which gives them extraordinary powers. And then recently, the Joker Tut continued this emergency on one hand with guess what? Syria. Syria posed an emergency threat to the United States, and therefore we had to continue the state of emergency. And then they also have, get this, because this tells you what they think <coughs> is perhaps upcoming, which means they will bring it on out themselves, the Lucy scum that they are. Working for Lucifer. The H7N9 flu, they've invoked, the U.S. government has invoked a, a medical type emergency with respect to this ongoing new bird flu out of China, who they say that the U.S. dropped off over there, but I say it's the Red Chinese who probably did it, and consequently they're trying to get it to mutate, and then that those people may have been some of the ones that brought it over to the United States on those clandestine flights where they flew the red Chinese, flew on clandestine flights to Wright Patterson Air Force Base several weeks ago as we reported. And that they were flown out on helicopters to areas, other areas in Ohio, other areas in Indiana, uh, in Illinois, Chicago, and uh, Kansas City, Missouri. So consequently, you're in the heartland and you're in the crossroads of all this country in these areas trucking, what have you, train traffic, airline traffic, etc. Then wouldn't it be very easy then to plant their little H7N9 and start it working or some other biological weapon that they could say then in quote unquote, it's an act of God. God meaning Lucifer, the little G scumbag, little G Lucifer. to bring on the blood sacrifice, to start the killing that will, when the blood starts, it will not stop until Jesus comes back, which Jesus himself even described that the times here will be, if the times were not shortened, there should no flesh be saved. Now, this is an interesting something from uh, somebody I know, which is quite interesting, talking about the chain of command. General Ham, in a sense, uh, you know, Panetta could have done the order, carried on an order, but that order had to come from Obama because essentially General Ham worked directly, in a sense, for the commander-in-chief. So the chain may have been to the Secretary of Defense but, or the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, but in a sense, Ham is a big enough four-star that he probably got the direct order uh, would have possibly come through the president. Whichever to say, the chain of command, the ultimate top of that chain for the military is the commander-in-chief. In a state of emergency or a state of war, it's the commander-in-chief. And then basically, Panetta or Dempsey, who probably did pass on orders to Ham and Guayette, When they told him to stand down or don't go, which now the trick is, like Juan Williams said on Fox, nobody said told him to stand down. They just told him not to go. Huh. I just heard Charles cry before I went on say, well, what the, Juan, what does that mean? I mean, if they were told not to go, then they were told to stand down. Now, well, it's different. You know, you see how the provision, the you know, the, the stitch in time, the provision, the care, the fiddle in the can, whatever you want to call all this crap, 
is so beyond the pale, you can't believe it. But here's what I'm going to say. Here's what this person wrote to me. Absolutely, the president is the ultimate top chain of command for the mill, and not anyone else in the cabinet has a real say in what can or can't be done. And he says this was the same situation with the Pueblo. You remember, you might remember, ladies and gentlemen, the spy ship, the Pueblo, that was attacked by the North Koreans, and they took them all into prisoners of war. And you remember all of that? And the thing is, he says, this is what he says, same situation with Pueblo under attack. We were there and ready, basically, to help the Pueblo, but were ordered to stand down directly by the president at that time. So in this case, in this situation, the Joker Tut Lizard is to blame and solely him and no other patsy can be made with respect to that. Oh, if they, if they relay the orders and give the emphasis to it, I would say they could be. But just as in later years, the government tried to blame the Pueblo captain for the fiasco, but the crew of the Pueblo demanded a trial with full disclosure at their defense that when the gov backed up because they knew exactly who was at fault and did not want it revealed, classified, sealed, and forgotten, in quotes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there's a whole lot of people out there like this guy that don't forget and the friends of Roland Carnaby who are waking up by the dozens now but are seeing that it's almost, if not, in fact, it is too late. It's almost too late. We're at that point that nothing can be done, and this thing is going to flush and go by the by, and it'll go into martial law. You have the study that we had uh, last week or whatever to where 29% uh, uh, of the registered American voters, according to a study that was done, um, that they said that armed rebellion might soon be necessary in the United States. That's 29% of the U.S. population there, police. That's about close to a third. And this was a survey that was done that was uh, basically uh, uh, in a, something called the Talking Points Memo. Talking Points Memo. And it was uh, printed up in an article at Infowars.com, but it referenced the university study. And what they basically said was that uh, 3 in 10 registered American voters believe an armed rebellion might be necessary in the next few years, according to the results of a staggering poll released Wednesday, that would be like a Wednesday or so ago, by Farley Dickinson University's Public Mind. So you see, your numbers are changing up there, boys. Don't think that 90% of the American people want the guns taken away. Now, what Dr. Pachinik I was saying earlier, Dr. Pachinik basically said was that this Under Secretary of State uh, Kennedy, who he says he knows because he used to work under Kennedy used to work under Pachinik, and I'm just going to paraphrase basically. I'm going to almost try to quote it, but I can't quote it exactly. But you can listen to Alex Jones's, you know, archive or the refeed. But Dr. Pachinik said that basically Kennedy, um, Hillary Clinton, and uh, Dempsey, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, and others, that they were the ones responsible for the Benghazi, for the deaths in Benghazi, and that it involved the CIA station there, which really was being allowed, to where there was torturing being done and weapons trafficking. And the weapons were the weapons being trafficked to go to the war in Syria, just like we told you back then. When it came out, I told you that. Steve talked about it on air. I did, too. So that is true. But Dr. Pachinik said basically that uh, they should be arrested, uh, incarcerated, and tried, 
and then if necessary uh, be thrown in jail or if necessary be executed after trial. That's what Dr. Pachetic had to say to Dan Alex Jones. And Alex asked him if he wasn't scared of the Secret Service, and he said, you know, I'm not scared of those people. He says all they're doing, they're, all they do is protect these these uh, criminals, these high-level criminals, these psychotic, uh, you know, antisocial criminals. So that was pretty strong, ladies and gentlemen. But I'll tell you something. This is not going to be a little walk in the park, and no matter how many awards they give to Hillary Clinton and Susan Rice and how much water everybody carries on the Democratic side, you're going to find out. But I also found that you couldn't listen to the uh, hearings yesterday at all. They started out with the hearings, but then they moved it to like C-SPAN 3 or something. I didn't even know there was a 3. I checked on 1 and 2, and it was on neither, and they were talking about inane, stupid subjects. But I did see it, and I watched it at 2 o'clock a.m. this morning. I started watching it until about 4 uh, 45 a.m. or 5 a.m. Uh, this this a.m. here this morning, and I watched the hearings, and I could not believe what my mind was hearing. Because even the Republicans, they don't understand what's going on, or if they do, they're not asking the right questions necessarily either. Only a few people ask even close to the right questions. And uh, it's just amazing. Now I'm going to say this. Yes. The F-16s could have come from Aviano. There could have been some things done with the fleet, the carrier groups. They had in, they had special forces, small team in Tripoli that was going to be sent and could have been sent immediately to Benghazi. They were told to stand down. People say, well, Hillary didn't know. She said she didn't know in testimony. And then in sworn testimony yesterday, Hicks, the deputy chief in Libya, after uh, Ambassador Stevens was raped and uh, murdered, he then had a conversation at 2 a.m. in the morning with Hillary Clinton and all of her staff when she was Secretary of State. And he told her there's no any kind of a you know, a, a, a protest or anything like that. It was just all this stuff that was set up to him was an attack, which it was. And then she said in testimony last fall here, or earlier this spring or whatever, after she finally had the medical, you know, leave, remember, and then she came back and testified when she said, what difference does it make? You know, we've got people who died here. You know, what difference does it make? How it happened? And then that was the talking point for all the Democrats yesterday was, well, it's terrible and it's a shame that the families and all this happened, but we need to focus on making sure it doesn't happen again. Not to keel all or stand before the mast anybody who did it and who was at fault, who their head should roll. Oh, no. Go after the Whistleblowers, and there is another whistleblower that was not allowed to testify, and they had four, recall. But here's the deal. This thing is just part and parcel of a large series of things, and it involves the Syrian war. It involves the fact that the United States now runs al-Qaeda. But at the same time, we've got the U.S. invoking an emergency for the H7N9. We have the potential of a nuclear false flag event, which I hopefully, I think we may have precluded or prevented by bringing it out last week. And incidentally, if you saw the uh, story uh, to where just like in Boston, there was a 666 near the finish line, an address, there was in Cincinnati two 666s. 666 May Ring and uh, 666 uh, Pete Rose Way or whatever, very close to the finish line. But I'm glad that those events took place without a lot of goofball stuff. Now, the fact is, 
We're hearing about trains being stopped and cargoes being checked in the western U.S. We're hearing about this OHP thing. I think there are buckets of sun loose in the United States. And that's the deal that's going on. In a, one interesting little scenario, did you see that there's a 50 rail cars, a 71 car long cargo train derailed at the uh, Balaya Katlava uh, station in Russia's Rostov region about 2 a.m. local time last night or whatever. And uh, up to 10 cars caught fire as a result of the accident and heavy smoke was reported at the scene. As a result of the accident, one of the cars, a diesel fuel tank, started the fire engulfing an area of 1.5 thousand square meters. 29 people admitted to the hospital injuries and burns. 11 of them, including the locomotive driver, have been hospitalized, one in critical condition. And basically when they do the investigation, they say that uh, uh, the derailment of one of the cars released propane gas, enabling the frames to spread to the locomotive. And you can see the pictures online. I believe Steve posted it up there at SteveQuayle.com. Well, here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen. Recall that we had West Texas, the fertilizer plant, blow up. I told you that's great terror by the Russians. The Mobile Bay gasoline barges that blew. Great terror by the Russians. The Louisiana Denham Springs, or where it was, somewhere near uh, Baton Rouge or Denham Springs, Louisiana, the tank farm there on fire. Well, isn't it interesting that it looks like we had a tit for tat for tat train derailment with a propane, remember it was at West Texas, a propane or or, uh, or an explosion involving uh, either the propane or the uh, uh, the ammonia you see a gas catching fire, which then blew the whole thing. Now you see this train over there. I will tell you this. That's tit for tat from our boys, and I would hopefully that the MMB, the Mighty Men and Women of Valor, that they went tit for tat against the Russians. Somebody did on the American side, and uh, that is what's going on with that. The stuff is getting ready to hit, ladies and gentlemen. That's all I can tell you. And for all you tares out there, all you workers of iniquity who are surveilling your brothers and are planning to throw them under martial law and steal all their money, Lord Jesus is going to send his angels and your career dissipation lights will be blinking because you're going to burn in the fire forever. Good night to the mighty men and women of valor. I know that you're up there protecting against the alien scum coming in and against the terrorism of the United States and missile defense on the continental of the U.S. And them old Fandango Rangers, I know you're out there and ready. And old Mikula Pua, you got it dialed in, buddy, I know that. Broadcasting to the U.S. and around the world by way of clear digital audio, 22,500 miles above the planet. This is the Global Star Radio Network.
Broadcasting to the U.S. and around the world by way of clear digital audio. 22,500 miles above around the world by way of clear digital audio. 22,500 miles above around the world by way of clear digital audio. 22,500 miles above around the world by way of clear digital audio. 22,500 radio network at www.survive the number two thrive.net times are getting tough for most of us and being prepared has never been more important all of our hosts strive to keep you well informed so that you can achieve optimum health in all areas of your life if you feel that the shows and website are informative please share this information with your friends and family if you would like to see certain topics covered please let us know join us on facebook to help spread the word you can find the link at the bottom right of the Survive to Thrive homepage. Enter Health Botanicals is the sole sponsor for this network, providing you not only with important information, but also with highly effective products that produce real results, such as Enter Food, Coconut Milk Powder, Liver Cleanse, Coco Mojo, Silamarin, Nutri Cafe, and introducing the new 40 Day, 40 Night Organic Preparedness Pail. A preparedness supply unlike any other on the market today. Supporting EnterHealth supports both this network and your own health. Without good health, we go nowhere. Go to survivetothrive.net and click on the EnterHealth banner on the top right for automatic discounts or call them at 866-762-9238. That's 866-762-9238. You can also go to their website at www.enerfood.com. That's E-N-E-R-F like Frank, O-O-D like dog, dot com. Enerfood.com. A big thank you to all of our listeners already taking the products that Enter Health offers. We truly appreciate it. We thank you for your support and encourage you to listen often to stay informed during these crucial times. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's the Hawk coming to you. It's Friday night. It's 5-10-2013. And ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you something. When you sit and look at what's going on, it reminds me, and I watch TV, and I watched some of that, that hearing, you know, the other night, and all of these things. And then I watch these weasels, these little weasel words, and little lawyer-type trickeries, and all this little crummy crap. From this little carnival barker guy, this carny, you know, and all this stuff. And, you know, it's just getting to be so much. And here I just thought I would go to Isaiah chapter 5. And basically, now will I sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. My well-beloved hath the vineyard in a very fruitful hill. And he fenced it and gathered it out the stones thereof, and planted it with the choicest vine, and built a tower in the midst of it, and also made a wine press therein. And he looked that it should bring forth grapes, and it brought forth wild grapes. And now, inhabitants of Jerusalem, men of Judah, judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard. And what could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes, and now go to, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take the hedge thereof, and it shall be eaten up, and break down the wall thereof, and it shall be trodden down. And I will lay it waste, it shall not be pruned nor digged, but there shall come up briars and thorns, and I will also command the clouds that they rain, no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel and the men of Judah his pleasant plant. And he looked up for judgment, but behold oppression for the righteousness, but behold a cry, woe unto them that join house to house, that lay field to field till there be no place that they may be placed alone in the midst of the earth. And in mine ears said the Lord of hosts, Of a truth many houses shall be desolate, even great and fair and without inhabitant. Yea, ten acres of vineyard shall yield one bath, and the seed of an homer shall yield an ephah. 
Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink, that continue until night till wine inflame them, and the harp, and the vial, and the tabaret, and the pipe, and the wine are in their feasts, but they regard not the work of the Lord, neither consider the operation of his hands. Therefore my people are gone into captivity, because they have no knowledge. Let me repeat that again. Therefore my people are gone into captivity, because they have no knowledge, and their honorable men are famished, and their multitude dried up of thirst. Therefore hell hath enlarged herself, and opened her mouth without measure, and their glory and their multitude and their pop, and he that rejoices shall descend into it. And the mean man shall be brought down, and the mighty man shall be humbled, and the eyes of the lofty shall be humbled. But the Lord of hosts shall be exalted in judgment, and God that is holy shall be sanctified in righteousness. Then shall the lambs feed after their manner, and the waste places of the fat ones shall strangers eat. Woe unto them that draw iniquity with cords of vanity, and sin as it were with a cart rope, that say, Let him make speed and hasten his work, that we may see it, and let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw nigh and come, and that we may know it. And this is the verse, ladies and gentlemen, that I think is most appropriate right now. Woe unto them that call evil good, and good evil, and that put darkness for light, and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes, and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine, and men of strength to mingle strong drink which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Therefore, as the fire devoureth the stubble, and the flame consumeth the chaff, so their root shall be as rottenness, and their blossom shall go up as dust, because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts, and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Therefore is the anger of the Lord kindled against his people, and he has stretched forth his hand against them and has smitten them. And the hills did tremble, and their carcasses were torn in the midst of streets. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. And he will lift up an ensign to the nations from far, and will hiss unto them from the end of the earth. And behold, they shall come with speed swiftly, and none shall be weary nor stumble among them. None shall slumber nor sleep, neither shall the girdle of their loins be loosened, nor the latchet of their shoes be broken, whose arrows are sharp and all their bows bent. Their horses' hooves shall be counted like flint, and their wheels like a whirlwind. Their roaring shall be like a lion, they shall roar like young lions, yea, they shall roar, and lay hold of the prey, and shall carry it away safe, and none shall deliver it. And in that day they shall roar against them like the roaring of the sea. And if one look unto the land, behold, darkness and sorrow, and the light is darkened in the heavens thereof. You see, ladies and gentlemen, I'll just let that speak for itself right now. But in the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, you see what you've got. You have a definite scenario. We even have a congresswoman from Missouri uh, basically stating that it was Obama that gave the order to stand down. Uh, that is exactly what uh, I told you last night. Basically, you know, because the situation is that... Uh, I read to you, and maybe uh, for those who weren't uh, listening last night, maybe I ought to read that again if I can find it. Uh, yes, here it is. And this is from somebody, this is from somebody who knows, okay? Absolutely, yes. The president is the ultimate top chain of command for the military. 
Not anyone else in the cabinet has a real say in what can or can't be done. Same situation as the USS Pueblo. If you do not know that, then look up the USS Pueblo, which was a spy ship that was under attack by the North Koreans, and then their crew was taken uh, prisoner of war and tortured for, a, for some time. And so here we go back to what this uh, gentleman who knows had to say. And I read it last night. I'm reading again because it's the same. The Prez, the ultimate top of the chain of command for the military, and not anyone else in the cabinet has a real say in what can or can't be done. Same situation with the Pueblo. Under attack, and then he says, we were there and ready to go to save and to assist the Pueblo, but were ordered to stand down by the president at that time. So the same thing is that the lizard man this president, the lizard, is to blame, and solely him. No other patsy can be made. Just as in later years, the government tried to blame the Pueblo captain for the fiasco, but the crew demanded a trial with full disclosure as a defense. Then the government backed off because they knew exactly who was at fault and did not want it revealed, classified and sealed and forgotten, of course. But it has not been forgotten because you are still alive, my brother, to tell the story. And ladies and gentlemen, it's really interesting that uh, after I talked about the uh, tit for tat, you know, for uh, the Russians' uh, train that sort of blew up with propane and then all their diesel fuel caught fire in that train. I said that was the tit for tat for uh, West Texas, the fertilizer plant for the... Uh, Gasoline barges at Mobile Bay for the uh, Denim Springs or outside of Baton Rouge, I believe, the tank farm uh, caught on fire. And I said, these are the great terror of the Russians. The same Russians that Wendy L. Schneider, the base public relations officer at Fort Garson, she said she just wanted to bring the Russian Spetsnaz in and the paratroopers in so they could be taken to America's pastime, the baseball game. We just want to have a good training and have good relations and take them to see the baseball. Wendy L. Schneider, these people you brought in set fire to the Hewlett Canyon. They set fire, you know, with their uh, helicopters. They went up there, landed on the top of the rim, and then they lit the fire up top. The fires that were surrounding you down around Colorado Springs, they set those. They set these. This is what they're here to do and were brought in to do by a usurper, by an Indonesian usurper who was allegedly recruited by the KGB when he was a teenager. And then if you recall Wendy L. Schneider before the last election, somebody told Medvedev, the head of Russia, to tell Vladimir that he would have a lot more flexibility uh, after he won the election, you see, with these missiles and these nukes and all these things. So now the chickens come home to roost. Woe unto them that call good evil and evil good. You see, what's up is down, what's down is up, what's black is white, what's white is black, it's just all reversed. And that is the case, I just read you the Isaiah. But here we go, ladies and gentlemen. And then last night, as I told the people last night, I'm going to tell you again. Yesterday, uh, early in the a.m., yesterday, the command unit up with tones, all the bells and whistles for those who understand it, who know, up with tones. The commander that is commanding all of the military in the United States, which doesn't always happen to be the Joint Chiefs or little Dempsey Boy and his little, you know, little, uh, you know, uh, Civil War type uniform, trim and tight and nicely fitted so he can sing in his glee club, you know. But the code name of that command unit, jokingly or not, it was Antichrist. The command unit was called Antichrist. That was heard in the clear on the HF comms.
So you see what's going on. And that command would be up. That command would be up with authority from the White House or what's called the NSC authority, the old 40 committee authority, whatever. Totally ridiculous. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I just cannot believe, you know, that we're looking at this thing here where you have the order given, had to have been given by the president, and that basically this was then allowed to take place, and I would submit it was a hit, as we said, to get rid of this ambassador who knew all of where the bodies were buried with regards to the torture in that place in Benghazi by the CIA and whichever EIEIO was there. The recruitment <coughs> of the Ansar al Sharia or whatever they are, they're talking about the Al-Qaeda of Libya who were used and funded and whose special forces and mercenaries were sent in to assist them to take down Gaddafi because Gaddafi who had been a British agent for so long was no longer useful do you remember back when Gaddafi had nuclear weapons and developed them and then all of a sudden he decided to give up the nuclear weapons and uh, you know ponied back up with the British and the Americans well you see he was no longer useful so they took him out to get the oil or whatever they were going to do. And then they used these guys and all of the shoulder-fired missiles and other type of weaponry, the other missiles, and they took them and gave them to these Al-Qaeda, sent them in to become the Syrian resistance. And then now, the Syrian resistance, you see... It has just switched, and it's all Al-Qaeda, or whatever the new name or burgeon of Al-Qaeda is. Because, you see, they have to allow them to get a name, because the name Al-Qaeda really is the base. And it meant the database of the CIA, of any Arab and Muslims who would work for cash, and do whatever the CIA wanted them to do. Well, that was Tim Osman, Osama bin Laden. That was him, or later became Osama bin Laden. USA Ma, Tim Osman, Osama, USA Ma, Obama. You got Obama now. Oh boy, that's a, a nice alliteration, isn't it? And then we've had the revolution in all the Arab countries and all the things. But you see, it's all leading up to, in that part of the world, the Gog-Magog War. Israel went ahead and had the stones enough to attack and to take out the missiles that were going to be transferred into Hezbollah's hand in the Lebanon because Hezbollah and the Iranians are there fighting. But you see, Al-Qaeda are the Wahhabias from Saudi Arabia. But you see, at the end, it won't make any difference because they all turn, and they all turn against Israel along with Russia. And then you got Ezekiel 38, 39. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, this thing is just so right there. But I was talking about the West City and how the tit for tat, and I congratulated whoever of the ultra-black U.S. forces that took out that train to show the Russians that, hey, two can play at this game, great terror, boys. And then isn't it interesting now today, oh, all of a sudden we've got a, we've got a, uh, 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 a first responder, an EMT, who just happened to possess a pipe bomb. Although they state clearly on air that they're not accusing him of setting the fire or blowing up the thing. He could just be an old boy with an old stump blower. Okay?
or they could have made sure he had one, or they could have said to him, you know, we're just going to give you, uh, you know, your pension right now. Uh, you go ahead and take the rap on this, or uh, we'll just put this in there and cloud the issue, but you're going to get uh, uh, allowed to be uh, moved out of here and we'll move you somewhere else. They won't, of course. They'll burn him if, if, if they've got him in that kind of a deal, or they'll erase his memory, put a new mind control load in it, and uh, send him around and get him to talk like a little monkey, all right, on a leash. Ladies and gentlemen, he'll tell you that it, uh, he was also probably involved with 17 hillbillies that did the Boston bombing, you know, and hit Oklahoma City, and that it really isn't the jihadis or anybody at all. But let me tell you what, the signature of the Russian Spetsnaz is on that thing like you will not believe, just as it is in, Bat, uh, in Denham Springs at the tank farm, just as it is in Mobile Bay, just as it was out there in Southern California in the uh, substation that took down a lot of power in Southern California because they were ventilated. Why didn't they come out and say what caliber of weapon was used to ventilate? Why didn't they say that, oh, we found shell casings or we found, we found actual rounds or bullets? They don't talk to you about that. Why are we having weird dumps? of, uh, you know, radioactive water in uh, different uh, places like uh, Lake Michigan. Why do we have all of a sudden all these problems with fires and stairwells and nuclear, uh, uh, nuclear power plant in Kansas? Okay? A fire in a stairwell that goes on for 30 minutes. And that was great because they did not bite on the stairway fire. They stayed at their protocol and stayed at the controls. And you got a skeleton staff at night. If they'd have gone in finally to, before shutting it down, or, you know, doing whatever they need to do to shut down or do the protocol, before going to fight the fire, if they'd have gone to check on the fire, then the Ruskies or whoever was there would slip through the other back door and then kill them and then get inside and would have taken out the entire thing and caused an incident where that whole reactor would have melted down. You see, this is what's there. And they were brought in at behest of the Luciferians in the Department of Human Sacrifice, the Executive Branch, the CIA, the FBI, the EIEIOs, whoever the heck you are out there, you know who you are, and you are workers of iniquity who work for Lucifer and your tares. You work and do the behest of the Illuminati bankers who own everything. And now you want to reap your harvest of blood sacrifice to your little G, God, Lucifer. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot forget. You cannot forget the story that talks to you about what these people at the top really are into. And if you remember, we've read it a number of times, but here are some quotes, and I go back, uh, this was, uh, Alex Jones put it in his book, 9-11, Descent into Tyranny, which he put out right after 9-11, so long ago now, wasn't it? But I always remember that he had some very interesting things in here. Here it is, the New World Order in its own words. National Socialism will use its own revolution for establishing a new order. New World Order, Adolf Hitler, World War II. And here is, uh, out of these troubled times, a new world order can emerge under the United Nations that performs as envisioned by its founders. President George Bush, Herbert Walker Bush, September 11, 1990, State of the Union. The New World Order by H.G. Wells, 1939, when the struggle seems to be drifting defiantly toward a world social democracy, there may still be a very great delays and disappointments before it becomes an efficient and beneficent world system. Countless people will hate the New World Order and will die protesting against it. When we attempt to evaluate its promise, we have to bear in mind the destruction
a total world population of 250 to 300 million people, a 95% decline from present levels would be ideal. Ted Turner, in an interview with Audubon Magazine. Ted, you are a Ted. Remember this, 2000, if this were a dictatorship, it would be a heck of a lot easier just so long as I'm the dictator. David Spangler, Director of Planetary Initiative of the United Nations. No one will enter the New World Order unless he or she will make a pledge to worship Lucifer. And no one will enter the New Age unless he will take a Luciferian initiation. And here's good old Prince Philip. In the event that I am reincarnated, I would like to return as a deadly virus in order to contribute something to solve overpopulation. And then that was uh, Deutsche Press, 1988. And then he says again, in 1986, he said, I must confess that I am tempted to ask for reincarnation as a particularly deadly virus. That's in his foreword to If I Were an Animal, United Kingdom, Robin Clark Limited, 1986. And here's the preface to Down to Earth by His Royal Highness Prince Philip again, Duke of Edinburgh, 1988. Page 8, I don't claim to have any special interest in natural history, but as a boy, I was made aware of the animal fluctuations and the number of game animals and the need to adjust the cull to the size of the surplus population. David Rockefeller, we are on the verge of global transformation. All we need is the right major crisis, and the nations will accept the new world order. You see, this is all coming, and this is what they're going and working for. President Bill Clinton, 1993, USA Today, March 11th. We can't be so fixated on our desire to preserve the rights of ordinary Americans. They just want to preserve their rights. Sarah Brady, Chairman of Handgun Control, Senator Howard Metzenbaum, National Educating, uh, Educator, January 94, page 3. Our task of creating a socialist America can only succeed when those who would resist us have been totally disarmed. Well, Sarah Brady, you and Bear, who used to live in Centralia, Illinois, you ain't going to get your wish. And back then, you used to take dope and smoke pot and drink beer all the time at the lake. But you ain't going to get your wish. You ain't going to disarm everybody in this old countryside. And I'll tell you what, you're the one who's also now a tear. The truth of the matter is that you do have those standby provisions and the statutory emergency plans are there, whereby you could, in the name of stopping terrorism, apprehend and invoke the military and arrest Americans and hold them in detention camps. Now, this was a brave man named U.S. Representative Henry Gonzalez, August 29, 1994. <clears throat> Henry Gonzalez also knew what he was talking about, about the Federal Reserve. Here is the one I always like here. The high office of the president has been used to foment a plot to destroy the Americans' freedom. And before I leave office, I must inform the citizens of this plight. President John Fitzgerald Kennedy in a speech made to Columbia University, November 12, 63, ten days before they assassinated and killed him. Ladies and gentlemen, these people at the top are not 
loving. They are Luciferian scum. Kennedy was going to tell you about it, and he wasn't any saint. <coughs> but he was trying to tell people, and at the very last, he tried to stop it. And what did they do? They killed him, who was a president of the United States. What do you think they're going to do to you? you got to be ready. We'll be back after the break. With natural and man-made disasters and economic turmoil, if we don't get well prepared, we will most certainly regret it. Good readiness must include storage of high-quality food that will build us up rather than tear us down. Much of the storable food available is full of bad fats, salt, sugar, nutrient-poor refined foods, and even MSG. In response, Enerhealth Botanicals has created our 40-day and 40-night 100% organic preparedness pail. It's GMO-free and has a 10 to 20-year shelf life if stored at 60 degrees or less. Some of the items need cooking, some can be eaten dry, while some can be soaked and sprouted. These are selling out fast, a third the price of storable food packages. Call us at 866-762-9238. That's 866-762-9238. Or go to enerfood.com, E-N-E-R-F-O-O-D.com. 866-762-9238. Or go to E-N-E-R-F-O-O-D.com. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's the Hawk on Survive to Thrive. It's Friday night, 5 10, 2013, the year of the snake, as the Chinese say. And the snake has already come back down to earth, I guarantee you. Lucifer is on this planet, I think he came last year, and now this is the final countdown of what he gets to do in his attempt to try to counterfeit our Lord Jesus. But you see, we've got to go through all this stuff. It's just not going to be a video game or a TV show. And you've heard me read Matthew 24 so many times and Luke 21. Well, let me read you something else here. Let me read you something that uh, I think is most appropriate at this time. Because it tells you, and it's Luke 10, 19. It tells you what the Lord has done and done for you, basically. And let's just go here right now. After these things, the Lord appointed other seventy also, and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place, whither he himself would come. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore that the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs amongst wolves. And then, you know, he goes on and do the different things and tells you what to do to go to the kingdoms, what he told these people to do. And some of the things he told them to do were this. And into whatsoever city ye enter, and they receive you, eat such things that are set before you, and heal the sick that are therein, and say unto them, the kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. So Jesus sent 70 into these different cities, and they were able to heal the sick. And even the very dust of your city which cleaveth on us, we do wipe off against you, notwithstanding be ye sure of this, that the kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. Now, if you go on down in Luke 10, 17 verse, And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And Jesus, he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you 
Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. <laughs> and in that hour Jesus rejoiced in the Spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered to me of my Father, and no man knoweth who the Son is, but the Father, and who the Father is, but the Son, and he to whom the Son will reveal him. And he turned unto his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things that ye see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. And then, of course, behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. You see, ladies and gentlemen, going back to what I told you here, he says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, I also will tell you that, as he said, you know, in Matthew, in Luke 21, where we go there, and it says, And ye shall be betrayed, verse 16, both by parents and brethren, and by kinsfolks and friends, and some of you shall they cause to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But there shall not an hair of your head perish. And here's the key. And it ties with what I read you just previously. In your patience possess ye your souls. This is where we're at, ladies and gentlemen. And you have somebody who is working at the head of the United States government and a large number of sections who are working for Lucifer, and they're going and getting ready to take this thing out. And I would also say to you what the Lord tells you, again, in John, and we've talked about this before several times, but I'm trying to let you know that there are things and there are abilities and powers that the Lord has bestowed upon you. And you are to use them. And this would be a good time to start wanting to use them, let me tell you, because at this point in time, you're going to start seeing stuff that you can't believe. And some of you are already in that boat, I do believe, when I talk to different people. And this, if you go to John, and you go to chapter 14, and you go, say, to verse 10, Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, 
and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. And if ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, and because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that my commandments, he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. You see, if you read that right there, do you not understand how that is really a changer, a game changer? You just can't gloss over these things. You can't just repeat them like you're in the second grade and you're trying to get the free uh, Bible or, or, you know, get the approval of the Sunday school teacher. You have to know this stuff. You have to know the Lord Jesus. And when you know the Lord Jesus and you know and you understand that the blood of Jesus, there's so much power in it and that it basically saved you, and that if you repent of your sins and ask Him to come into your heart as your Savior, that that is the key, that is the key to everlasting life. That doesn't mean you get to sit in the big lazy boy and drink your beer and all the stuff and watch it on the big screen. You're going to have to live this. Now, let me tell you something. Going back very quickly, you're seeing all of the things lead up to Ezekiel 38, 39, the Gog Magog War, or World War III. As Albert Pike, the big old Lucy, the big old Lucy wrote to Giuseppe Mancini in 1871. And you know, it's just incredible. And I've read you the, the different things about that, and I'm not going to necessarily do it again right now. But I will tell you what, you're seeing it all take place in front of your eyes. The Third World War must be fomented by taking advantage of the differences caused by the agent tour of the Illuminati between the Zionists and the leaders of the Islamic world. And the war must be conducted in such a way that Islam, the Muslim Arabic world, and political Zionism, the state of Israel, mutually destroy each other. Meanwhile, the other nations, once more divided on this issue, will be constrained to fight to the point of complete physical, moral, spiritual, and economical exhaustion. And then, he says, we shall unleash the nihilists and the atheists, and we shall provoke a formidable social cataclysm, which in all its horror will show clearly to the nations the effect of absolute atheism, the origin of savagery, and of the most bloody turmoil, that everywhere the citizens obliged to defend themselves against the world minority of revolutionaries will exterminate those destroyers of civilization and the multitude disillusioned with Christianity, Pike says, whose deistic spirits will 
from that moment be without compass or direction, anxious for an ideal, but without knowing where to render its adoration, will receive, Pike says, the true light <coughs> through the universal manifestation of the pure doctrine of Lucifer, brought finally out in the public view. This manifestation will result from the general reactionary movement which will follow the destruction of Christianity and atheism, both conquered and exterminated at the same time. Now, when Albert Pike, <coughs> do you think they may have planned what's coming? <coughs> or that he downloaded, <coughs> excuse me, downloaded the plan from Lucifer himself? You see, they try to confound you. They try to hit you. They try to take you out. They try to make you cough. They try to do all these things. But the power of the Lord Jesus is what will save you. And to this end, ladies and gentlemen, to this end, ladies and gentlemen, you're seeing now once again, just as the Joker Tut lizard man, the usurper from Indonesia, He's now, once again, the U.S. is discussing giving Russian missile defense data. You know, given to the Russians. And you remember he said, Vladimir, I'll be more flexible after I win the election. And what have they done? They've stood down. The head of the U.S. Missile Defense Agency says that the Obama administration has discussed declassifying key data on the U.S. missile defense in order to provide it to Russia. Isn't that a treasonous act? If you give to the enemy all of your secrets, if you then actually hire the enemy to come inside your nation and go to the baseball game with Wendy L. Schneider at Fort Carson, or go down to Fort Hood, or be seen outside of uh, in the mountains, in the Uari Mountains, near Bragg, in maneuvers with your little helos, or to land to land at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio, <clears throat> to land there, and then with their helicopters then fly to the Voice of America at the corner of Butler County, Warren County, Hamilton, in that area, the old Voice of America, and then for 12 hours, some real good, uh, you know, Kansas, Nebraska speaking Russian probably took over, probably took over, the voice of America and cut in and became, for the next 12 hours, the guy who took over and was the operator for all the military HF networks. And then when you talk about it, and you get every people riled up, and you go against the Sheriff Little Dickie Jones of Butler County, Ohio, then he starts going around <clears throat> And trying to get in the hams business, and uh, then the feds start doing it. And now there's a whole effort, you know, because somebody got so riled up over there in Ohio, they went against in a firefight inside Right Pat, which got locked down, and nobody's ever said boo about it yet, except the people who were outside of the base who heard what they sounded like World War III, and we heard from the backside that it was uh, U.S. military just starting to question what these dadgum Russian soldiers were doing there. And then now, all of a sudden, there's a big lockdown, and everybody wants to lock down and guard against any leaks of any information out of right path. Yeah, because you're chairs. You have the original little green men there, and you won't tell anybody about that and how you made deals with the Lucy alien pine scum and how you had some that were alive, and how you used them, and how you used their technology and reverse engineered it, and how you kept doing that and doing that, and how you then, at other points in time, how you then maybe went even and saw some of the off-planet stuff with them and went and experienced their society, and all of this kind of a thing. And so you see, when you start to work for the Luciferians, and you stop defending the United States and promoting 
the welfare and the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the Declaration of Independence, and you stop protecting and creating the America that was, and you go over to the enemy side. And when you allow Russian Spetsnaz and Russian people to come in with their helos, and we know they came in because geese told us, the geese who were up watching when they came in, or the Red Chinese who came in a few weeks ago, and then after a nice meet and greet at your base, they then, you send the Red Chinese through different places in Ohio on helicopters and to Chicago and other places in Illinois and Indiana, and then also to Kansas City, Missouri. And I submit to you as well, because I saw them in the photographs, the crowd-sourced photographs from Boston. I saw your Chinese officer and then the young, high and tight Chinese guys standing in front of him as observers. And did these, are these the guys that you brought in? Dyke Department of Human Sacrifice for Lucifer, are these the ones that you brought in? To maybe get the bird flu started here, the H7N9, or to get it to jump? Is that your next waiting in the wings? And no wonder you want your base locked down and you don't want anybody talking about it or anybody discussing the evil that you do therein. And it ain't the only base either, I'm going to tell you. There's all kind of stuff going on right now. But here, going back to this missile defense stuff, the Missile Defense Admir Agency Director Vice Admiral James Siring said that he has discussed declassifying data, including the speed of the interceptors, with senior Defense Department officials and that the missile defense has long been a contentious issue between the United States and Russia, and that the U.S. has said that it has capabilities are aimed at the countering the threats of Iran and North Korea. It says that their interceptors would pose no threat, not pose a threat, to Russia's nuclear arsenal. Well, they should do it. The Russians had the, uh, their own defense. The Russians have the, the mountain that is completely stocked. They have all kind of civil defense for their people. The Red Chinese have the ability to put millions of people in Beijing underground with food and everything stored and ready to go. And then meanwhile, you have FBI agents in the United States back in the early 2000s, late 90s, where I actually knew somebody who had a building that had one of the old uh, forgotten, they forgot about the old civil defense shelters in the deep basement that nobody told them about, but when he bought the building, it was there, it was still fully stocked. And I remember as a child, as a kid, seeing those everywhere. And that's when Eisenhower had food enough for every man, woman, and child in America stored in the limestone caves in the Kansas City, Missouri area. But we gave all of that away in the cheese lines, didn't we? Yeah. You see, so America is once again being taken down and being made defenseless. I can tell you without a doubt, ladies and gentlemen, the Coast Guard has been told to stay home. The U.S. Navy is not sending out the P-3 Orions like they used to. The carrier groups are back in base, and many of them are not getting the necessary work on them done that they should be getting done because of the sequestration, I suppose. But the fact is, the entire southern border, the entire net, and all of the stuff that used to be out there, that you could not get a mouse to walk through it without being seen, all of that capability is shut down. All of the sonars, radars, and things that used to be out there are being turned off. The West Coast as well, and the Northern Coast with Canada. All of that's shut down. So, as I've said before, and Steve Quayle was told by the head of the mighty men and women of Valor, that the top door was open, the side doors are open, the bottom doors are open, all the doors are open in the United States. And you remember George Washington's vision. 
where it all uprises and comes again against America. Well, this is who's doing it. Obama has twice altered U.S. missile defense plans in Europe that Russia has stridently opposed. You see, the heck with the Russians. They conned us into letting themselves, you know, they didn't even, they didn't even ask to come. They were hired by Spetsnaz and the Russian paratroopers were hired by the Department of Human Sacrifice that the bull dyke, the Politano sits on top of. But she sits there taking orders from Joker Tut lizards who then take orders from Illuminati bankers and big shots and Lucifer himself. Ladies and gentlemen, there's power in the blood of Jesus. Don't you forget it. Because it shall come to pass. And one interesting little thing. This is about money. And most people, even people who have some money, who think they're rich, they got a few million bucks or something, or they, they make uh, a quarter of a million a year, which would be in 1960 terms, you know, like about 66 or something, that would be equivalency of about 25000 back then. So you're, in fact, if you make 250000 a year, you're middle class. But you see, all that slid down. Well, I only tell you what, I understand all of that. And you got one in five people on food stamps. One third of the people in the U.S. Protectorate of Puerto Rico are on food stamps. Now you're starting to see it all over the world. In Greece, 60% of the youth are unemployed, have no jobs. It is getting destroyed. And here's what uh, Karen Hudis, who used to be a high-level World Bank uh, person who blew the whistle on some corruption there, and she got booted out. And here's what she said that the Swiss uh, experts found this study, and here's what they found. 147 companies, most of them in the financial sector, control 40% of the assets of 43,000 companies and corporations. And through these links... They also control 60% of the revenue on the planet. 147 companies, mostly in the financial sector, control 40% of the assets of 43,000 companies. And through these links, they control 60% of the revenue. Chaired by the World Bank for the purpose of world domination, she said, this is now about to end now. Ladies and gentlemen, good night to the mighty men and women of valor. Thank you for protecting us. Next time, if there's a Benghazi, fly the TR-3B. Get there in 10 or 15 minutes and zap them. Call the fire down on the Lucys. Take out the Russians who come here to oppose us at the behest of the Luciferians. The mighty women of valor, I thank you. And to the good old Bandanga Rangers, I know you're ready. Miggy Lapua, I can see you, buddy. You're all dialed in on that good blue cold scope. And you're ready to get it on. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Don't go into there. It's a very night without a fight. Broadcasting to the U.S. and around the world by way of clear digital audio, 22,500 miles above the planet. This is the Global Star Radio Network.